the contract extension, we believe it is for two years beyond this season that it is signed. And there is still belief though, that, that, that might be something that, that that's in place, but it doesn't, guarantee that he's coming back he needs to want to come back is probably the big part of it i'm not looking to get you to say something or anything but i there's just been a lot of people from the hockey world kind of reaching out what's going on in calgary we're hearing things is is daryl coming back it seems like there's a sentiment that it's not a lock that he's coming back oh i i don't i i would say it's not even close to a lot it's not even a coin flip that it's that he's coming back um Look, this season has been off the rails more or less from the start. And this team falling short of a playoff spot and having an opportunity, in fact, just having the Winnipeg Jets open the door in these last five weeks has sort of been an incredible, you know, opportunity for this team to get in. And they still don't have what it takes to get there, don't have the goods, don't have the consistency, the confidence, they don't have a lot of it things. Um, but when it comes to the coach, I think the frustration has built so much from every facet of the organization, from staff members to front office to whoever it may be that's around the team on a daily basis, including the players, it's worn on everyone. And I can say confidently that changes are coming this summer, this off season. I just don't know who they are and who it's going to be because it, it certainly, I think there's a possibility that Brad tree living is, is no longer the general manager. There's the possibility that Daryl Sutter is no longer the coach. There's a possibility that both of those men are not back in their same roles next season. There's a lot up in the air, a lot to figure out and the way that this has all unfolded has it's we're in the pre-eruption of volcano stage right now so do you lay their all their flames lack of a success at daryl's feet no i didn't say that at all i just said that the way this season has unfolded he it's his his constant i don't know um you you played for him, Rhett, so you under like what's the best way to say it? Is it constant negativity? Is that is that how you describe it? He can be negative, but it's it's more the constant needling. It's, it's I, it, and it's not needling. It's it's there's always a it's a pressure. I don't know, like you said, I don't think that negativity is always even the correct word to use but there's always there's no push. level of satisfaction right if you, is that no, fair Red? Is... you are not allowed to be happy with what anything you've ever done it's always well what are you going to do next what are you gonna, what, right like yeah. not that you should be stopping it after you win a game and kicking your feet up for three weeks but we beat and i've said this before we beat anaheim in the first game of the first round in overtime came in the room pumped up got in shit it was like, and then we went on to lose that series. And I think that had a big part of that played a big part of it because it was like, wait a minute, we're in the playoffs. The only thing that matters is winning. We did win. We won an overtime, had to suck it up to get the win. And you go into the room afterwards and you got shit for allowing Anaheim to stick around in game one. It was like, oh, okay. 